So happy to be back from Jamaica. We had a wonderful time. And hopefully, I'm not gonna we're not gonna get too complicated today. But I thought, um, and other people have suggested that just to, we might want to hear about the trip and you know, what it meant to me personally, um, as and what I felt like God was doing, at least in my own life. And hopefully, it will encourage all of us because it's truth from the Word of God, um, but <laughs> we had a great time, we, we did a lot of work, um, we had construction crew going, we had prayer team going, we had a medical team going, we had people, you know, what else was there? We had um, all these different parts of, of the body working together to love people and to reach out to the Jamaican people. And it was such a beautiful picture of, of the church working together. And that is what God wants within us. Is he wants us to be in a relationship with each other as God's people. And, and that's something very, very important to God. Is our relationships that we have with one another. Especially in the body. The whole Sermon on the Mount. A lot of it, the majority of it was how we relate to one another. What does your relationship look like? Um, with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And He just wants us to grow in these relationships with, with each other. Um, at the beginning of, um, even before anything was created, there was just God. And He existed, but He was not alone. Uh, because God is three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He existed in perfect relationship with Himself. He existed in complete and perfect love. There existed love and unity between the, um, the, the figure of the Godhead. And so that, when there's so much love, it's not that God needed anything. He was not needing more love because there was perfect love. But there's such an overflow of love that everything you see, all the creation, is an expression of, of that overflow that existed um, um, in God. So we were created out of that love. And we were created to, to, to experience and to live out the love that God already has within Himself. And when we love one another, um, the glory of God is manifested. In John chapter 17, Jesus is praying for His disciples. And He's talking about this glory that existed um, before time began. This glory that existed between the Father um, and the Son. And it was the love that they had for one another. He's praying for, um, Jesus is praying for his disciples. Um, and, he's, and he's praying, he says, that all of them may be one Father. This is in verse 21. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. So as the Father and the Son are so in love with one another in such good relationship and unity that they are considered one, we, God, Jesus wants us to be so in love with one another and in <laughs> unity that, that we are one, just as um, God is one. He's talking about this glory um, that has been given, the same glory that exists in God. Um, and I just want to talk about how important it is for us to be in yeah. right. Well, why don't you move it up about two inches? It's so important for us to be in right relationship with each other, yet it's such a heavy topic because all of us have relations, not all, but <laughs> ideally we wouldn't, but so many of us have relationships in our lives that are not of what they need to be. They're broken because of hurts in the past, because of unforgiveness or bitterness or things that have been done wrong to one another. We have broken relationships um, with those that we love dearly. And Jesus prays and, his, and God's heart is that our relationships would be right, especially in the church, because as it says in John, when we live in that unity and that love for one another, God's glory is manifested on the earth. When people love one another and live in right relationship with each other, there's a taste of heaven on earth that you can't get from anywhere else. Amen. In fact, when God's people are living together and working together and loving one another, 
the world sees that and they look at that and they say, this is something I've never seen before. What is this? People loving one another and being happy. Um, and they want that. They, they taste that. And they, they, they're drawn to it. And that's how people come into the kingdom of God is when they yeah. see um, God's people loving one another. Because they see heaven for the first time and they see uh, that it is good. In fact, when we live in this kind of community and good relationship uh, with each other, um, and we taste it, and we start to live that life, you never want to go. You never want to go back to the way it was before. Right. Um, but on this um, on this trip um, to Jamaica, and even in the in all my, personally in my life over the past month or so, I feel like God has really been teaching me um, that it's important to just. Be in relationship with it with one another. Um, not even, you know, Angie, you don't even have to try to, you know, go change someone's life. You don't have to always, you know, go help somebody. It's not like I'm calling you to go um, change every single person you see. But just go spend time with each other. And, you know, that's the starting point of, of being in a good relationship is just spending time with each other and being with our brothers and our sisters. Um, just, just hanging out, getting to know each other. And I believe that's what um, he wants us to do. He wants us to fit that biblical picture of, of the first church. They, they met together daily um, in prayer and in breaking of bread. Um, and, and, you know, hearing the, the apostles' teaching, they gathered together of one accord. And, and when that happens, God's glory is manifested. People were coming into the church because they saw for the first time people loving one another. Um, but... While we were in Jamaica, um, I saw that happening a lot. Um, we had all these different groups of people on our team and also with the church there. Um, and we were, we were loving. We were doing the things that God wants, but it made it even more powerful, powerful because we were doing it together. We were doing it in unity and in relationship with one another. And because of that, God began to work in ways that we were not capable of. I mean, Richard and I, and, and also... Um, Brother Dan, I don't remember. Dan Smith. Dan Smith. Um, we were on the prayer team. I was for one day. Um, we uh, we just sat down and, and people who wanted prayer, they came to us. We literally almost had every single person who was seen by the doctor come and get prayed for. Amen. There were a few who ran out the door. <laughs> um, but, you know, some people some people are running for their lives from Jesus. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> he's got to pray for them and, and run after them. But... But almost everybody came forward asking for prayer. There were many people who, who even just, we didn't do anything. They came up and said, I want to give my life to the Lord. Um, I, there was, you, actually, you stepped away. And a couple of people came up to me and they, they told me, um, I had one lady tell me, um, she just wants to give her life to the Lord. Some people are saying, you know, I want to serve God better. Um, I want to, this, this, all these amazing things. And I didn't, we didn't do anything. We were, we were just there to pray for them. And I really believe a, a huge part of that was the fact that God's people were together doing His work. God was doing all the hard work for us, moving in these people's hearts and lives. And we were just there just to uh, reap the crop, um, reap where we had not sown. And um, it was a beautiful thing. When God's people are gathered together and in right relationship with each other, God moves in powerful ways. That's what you see in the book of Acts. Um, God's people met together and they were all praying and seeking God's face and that's when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came when God's people were all together. There was a chance for something amazing to happen like this in the Old Testament when God's people gathered together at the foot of Mount Sinai. God was about to give them the law and you know be their God and do powerful things in them. But you see what happened when they gathered together. They did not gather together of one accord. They were not seeking God's face. They all indulged in pagan revelry. And you know what happened after that was there was not an outpouring of anything. There was, um, you know, God sent those who were faithful to him throughout the camp and they killed everybody. He said, anyone you see, kill them. And there's a huge contrast between what happened when God's people gathered together in the Old Testament at this time when God brought them out of slavery to the time in the New Testament when Jesus by the cross, brought his people out of slavery, had a chance to gather together, but they did it with the right intention, and God did something powerful, and I believe that's what happened while we were in Jamaica. 
but about right relationships, um, I believe that that's where God works the most, is when we love one another, because, like I said, we manifest uh, the glory of God when we love one another in our right relationships. Um, there was a guy I met, and by the way, I had a wonderful time in Jamaica. Um, there was so much, so much to do, but yet, and the Jamaicans were helping out with a lot of the work, so I kind of had the freedom to choose a couple of the places where I wanted to meet, be because I wasn't always needed everywhere. Well, I was needed, but I, it was it was amazing. I didn't know what to do with myself. But <laughs> <laughs> but while we were there, I had you know I had a chance to work with the construction team. And, you know, and, and I had a chance to, to go play with the children. I had a chance to help out with the, with the prayer station. I had a chance to, um, to do quite a, a few different things. But, um, but I noticed that, or I just want to tell you about, when, when I, the first few days when I showed up and I was doing kind of a little bit of everything, I was afraid to really, you know, talk to any of the Jamaicans, try to, connect with them. Even even people on our own team, I was kind of hesitant to, you know, really establish a relationship with any of them, and I felt, I knew better, I knew that God would want me to um, form relationships with everybody, but I was a little hesitant. It's like, you know what, I can't understand them. They can understand me, but I can't understand them, and this isn't going to work out. You know, I'm just, what am I? I'm just some tall white guy who doesn't know how to do anything. And, um, so it was a struggle at first, but it was amazing as I, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try it. So specifically I was working with the construction team. We were building um, just this library um, for for the church that we were at. All these um you know Jamaican men or a little bit older than me helping out and some older ones, just you know, doing all this skillful work, you know, I didn't know how to do anything. I could just, you know, shovel rocks and <laughs> And, and bring them coffee. <laughs> but I just began talking with them, and as I did, I just began to realize that, that God was just letting us connect with each other. I had no idea what to do, but I found that um, we just ended up talking about Jesus. I, didn't, I had no intention of going into this place and ministering to anybody, just doing what, whatever I was told to do, and doing it the best of my ability. And ended up talking with every single one of the construction members, at least telling them, hey, you know, I follow Jesus, and they're saying, well, we're not, we're not Christians, like, why do, you, why do you do this? And just forming these relationships with them, I believe that um, it allows people to see, you know, who you really are, what, it's, what being a follower of Jesus is really like. There was one specific guy, I'm going to talk about him, I hope it's okay with him. Um, <laughs> his name was, his nickname was Cruz. And he was um, probably a little bit older than me, 21 years old. And we were together, you know, every day, um, helping with the construction, you know, shoveling, shoveling sand, shoveling rocks, um, and, and mixing this, the, the concrete, carrying buckets up. And, you know, he, he seemed kind of angry, you know, the first day. Like, he didn't want to be there. He had been a hired hand to help with the crew. And I didn't want to, you know, mess with him or anything. But we started talking, and... I began to realize God was working in this situation in a way that was out of my control. And we just we just became friends. It was almost weird. Um, because he, he could speak pretty good English. And um, he noticed, I noticed he began to reach out to me. I would just be around him and he would start asking me questions. You know, telling me all these different things about his life and his heart. And, you know, and it was amazing. It's like, wow. And I, God just began to teach me, you know. You don't always have to, to know what to do or what to say. Just go be with people, and you'll see me start to work. Just go love people, and you'll see me start to work. And um, as it, we began to form a relationship, and, you know, I told him about my life, told him about how I decided to follow Jesus, you know, while I was in high school, and just how amazing it was. And he just began to share with me all his struggles, you know, um, with Christianity and his faith and how he's been looked down upon a lot. Um, because, you know, he's from the ghetto, and, um, you know, people judge him, and he doesn't want to go back to church because he's afraid that, you know, no one's going to understand him. But I just began to share with him, and I, I, he told me, he says, Andrew, 
he says, there's something special about you. He says, I've never seen, I've never seen anybody, I'm, I never knew people, Christians were like this. And, and it was really neat. And um, he just continued to share with his life. And I saw that this, this guy who's, you know, this guy who grows up in the ghetto, who, who you know, hangs out with all the wrong people and, and does all the wrong things. He has a heart of love. He just, he told me about his, his family, his dad, his sister, um, and just his the love that he had for them, and I just saw it, and I knew that he had a good heart. He was just not um, in the right place. He was not following the Lord, but he had something that the Lord could use, and I just began continuing to be in this relationship with him, and try to just spend time with him, and, and it just began to grow and grow, and by the end of the week, you know, he just gave me. He started giving me stuff from his home. He gave me, he gave me some fruit. He, he gave me a bunch of fruit. He gave me some some, they're called bombies, they're like um, cassava that you fry, and they're kind of like french fries or hash browns. He gave me some, some artwork that his dad had made, um, he gave me some CDs, just, he just wanted to give me stuff, he says, he says, um, and the last day I ended up praying with him and telling him, you know, what I thought that God wanted to do in his life, and why he should follow the Lord, and, and everything, and we were just talking, he says, he says, you know what, nobody's ever talked to me like that before. He says, you know what, this whole week, God has been changing my life, and and I had no idea that he was going to say this, and he said, I'm going to go back, I'm going to start going back to church. And, <laughs> and you know, it was amazing, and he says he, he wasn't, he says he wasn't ready to give his life to the Lord yet because he didn't know what it was all about. He says, I want, I, I just want to, I just want to know God. That's what he said. He said, I want to know God personally. Oh, yeah. And, I just, you know, tried to do the best that I could, and he, he said, you know what, you're my brother. He says, I never, I never told anybody this, but you're my brother, and I really mean that. And it was just so amazing what happens when we take time to be in relationship with one another. And, and that's not to say, you know, I had an amazing time with Jeff, uh, hanging out with him, and he's blessed me so much, just being in relationship with him. And that's the biggest thing on this trip that I believe happened was... Um, at least in my own life, was just experiencing the relationships we have with each other, how God's glory comes through in them whenever they're right. The thing that I want to say, though, is in broken relationships, um, and we're gonna, I'm going to wrap it up so I don't take um, too long. <laughs> <laughs> we got till 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The thing in... In broken relationships, whether we like it or not, even when we're Christians, um, when we're living in broken relationship with one another, the kingdom of darkness is actually manifested. At the root of all sin and all chaos and all whatever in the world, it started out as a failure to love. Um, anytime there's sin in the world, if you look at the root of it, it, it comes from a decision not to love, either not to love God or not to love others. And those are the two greatest commandments, to love God and to love others. And I should have said this at the beginning, it's kind of out of order, but if you're a disciple of Jesus, your number one identity should be as a lover. Mm -hmm. um, Paul wrote that this is the most excellent way, is to love. Love is not just another thing that you put on the checklist of being a Christian. Love uh, covers everything. Um, that we do, it should encompass all of our decisions and motives, and even if it has to be love with anger or love with justice, it's always love, and that's who our identity is as a Christian, is um, a lover, and that's how people should see us, and that's why Jesus was so, um, em he emphasized so much in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, you know, he says, you know, if you even look at another woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. He says, you know, I hate divorce. You know, if you if you commit or if you divorce your wife, um, except for marital unfaithfulness, um, it causes her um, to become an adulteress because he hates it when there's broken relationships, and you know that happens sometimes. But it's just really ugly and should be prevented as much as possible. He says, you know, don't lie to each other. He says, don't get revenge on each other. Love your enemies. Um, you know, don't even be angry with your brother. He says, if, you, if you're in a broken relationship with somebody and you're offering your gift at the altar and you know 
that you're not right with this person. He says, you don't even offer your gift at the altar. You don't even come and worship me. You leave right there before you come to me and go make your relationship right with your brother before you come to me. And that's how important it is that our relationships are right. And, you know, John says, says how can we say we love God if we don't love our brothers? Mm -hmm. The way that your love for God is, re is reflected in how you love other people. Um, and they cannot be separated. Um, but So it's so important um, that you know, we are in right relationship with each other. If you're doing the things that are in the Sermon on the Mount, you're manifesting the kingdom of light. You're, man you're, you're showing um, that right relationship and love with one another. And if you're not, you, you're, you're showing what hell is like. The, the, you know, hell is broken relationship with God and with other people. Um, but Jesus wants us to make our relationships right. And I've learned personally in my own life to, to finish up that we got to fight for them. Um, I had no idea that I was going to share this um, today. Um, not, I'm not exactly sure how, but I, f I feel the need to. And, um, in my life over the past few months, there's been a relationship in my life that it started out uh, wonderful and there's one of my friends, a friend of mine, you know, we were best friends even, um, loving one another, praying with each other, serving, you know, talking, to, you know, about God. I felt like this person, you know, was, was my best friend. But at some point along the way, there was a break, there was some bitterness, and we, we just stopped talking. Um, and I had no idea what to do. You know, there was a broken relationship there because of some confusion and hurt. I really believe it, it came from the devil, just <coughs> trying to mess up what God was doing. And I remember just day and night, um, just always thinking about trying to make this relationship right um, with uh, my sibling in the Lord. And I remember just trying to reach back out to this person, trying to talk to them, you know, trying to bring this relationship back together. And the thing was, I was I kept trying to do it in my own strength. I kept trying to do it apart from from the Holy Spirit. And you know, nothing was happening, and I got so discouraged. I remember even weeping um, a couple nights uh, just because I thought this it was over. You know, I mean, how is this how is this relationship going to be restored? There's nothing I can do. And the thing was, I did not lean on God. I did not wait um, and ask God just to step in and help me and help make this relationship right. And so, I, but I began to. And I waited. And, you know, I feel like the Lord really was pressing on my heart that He was going to make this relationship right. That it was not going to be by your own strength. It's going to be by the strength of the Lord. Um, because the battle is the Lord's. And when He told me, He says, Andrew, Andrew you know, He really showed me, Andrew, you need, you need to fight. You need to fight for this relationship because relationships are important to me. And so I began praying and, and just waiting. And, um, um, Actually, on this trip, uh, oh my gosh, one of the people on the trip uh, was was the person with whom this there's this broken relationship, and, and I just began. I just felt like the Lord said, "Just go spend time. Just go spend time with them." And you know, I did. You know, I didn't know what to do. I was afraid for my life that this thing wasn't going to work out. Uh, but, the, but the Lord began to show me it's going to be by my strength, not by yours. You know, just go spend time with them. And I did. And all of a sudden, you know, just trying to love and, try, and fighting for this relationship after months, things began to, you know, work out and, and get better. And we began to connect again. You know, and by the end of the week, I was filled with this joy because I realized I'd been journaling everything that happened each day. And it didn't even hit me until the last day when I read back over my journal. Mm -hmm. That God had answered all my prayers. Mm -hmm. And this relationship was restored. Wow. And I believe that, that it's going to continue to, to get better. And that um, God is going to bless this just friendship. And, and I just feel a, a lot more peace in my heart. But the main thing is, is that we got to be in, in right, right relationship with our brothers and sisters. To the best of our strength. To fight for these relationships and to love one another. Because that's where God's heart is. I believe um, more than anything mm -hmm. is that we love one another. So I encourage you to fight.
Fight for the broken relationships in your life. And do it by the Lord's strength and not by your own. And um, He will honor that. Um, you know, sometimes it's difficult, but keep going. He'll honor that. And, and like I said, well, I just want to share with you just this verse of what happens. Again, in John 17. Um, what happens when we're in right relationship with each other? He says in John 17, chapter 20, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That... All of them may be one Father. I read half of this, but just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And that's the that's what happens. When we are in right relationship with each other and loving one another, the world believes that God has sent Jesus. The world believes um, in the Messiah. Um, because we're in right relationship with each other and living as a church, the gospel is spread, and people really see Jesus Christ manifested. Jesus says, this is how the world is going to know me, and this is how the world is going to know that I have loved you, is when you love one another. And um, that's all I have. <laughs>